Hi and welcome to this course on data analysis with Pandas. Panda, it is an open source library which is used for working with data sets. Hi, my name is Pranjal and I am your course instructor. With the help of this Panda, you can analyze your data, clean your data, explore your data and even manipulate your data. We all know that data is a new oil and just like oil data is also valuable but if it is remain unrefined then it is of no use now in order to make your data into meaningful information you need to re remove some impurities from it now in order to achieve this goal i will recommend to use this panda library which will help you out to clean the messy data sets and make them more readable and more relevant and relevant data is very much important in the field of data science, data analysis, and even in machine learning. It's simply you can think it of like if you're going to put garbage in, then in return you're going to get garbage out. So you will always need the clean data and the meaningful data in order to get some insights and do some analysis on your business, predict the customer behaviors, or even knowing the trend of market. For all of this objective, you need to have a meaningful data and here in this course you're going to learn that how you can use this panda library in order to achieve your objective from data importing for different sources performing data extraction doing some statistical analysis then creating filters then data shorting and so much thing you're going to learn here in this course so See you in the class. Hi there, welcome back. Here in this lesson, I'm going to show you that how you can create a virtual environment where you can keep all your dependencies which is required by our project and in the isolated manner. Okay, so for it, you need to use this command python3 hyphen m virtual env then space the name of your virtual environment which is vnv here. Okay, once you will going to create the virtual environment using this command it will going to create a directory in your working location which is vnv here now i'm going to go inside this virtual environment to do so you need to just activate the vnv batch file okay so this is the directory where the activate function is there and then you need to use vnv okay now we are inside the virtual environment now let me show you that Till now, there is nothing installed in this virtual environment as it is empty. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to install our main de uh, dependencies, which is panda here. Just write down pip install pandas. As there was nothing installed, and for pandas, it required the numpy as well. So it will going to install pandas as well and the numpy. Okay, so this is how you can install the dependencies libraries using pip install command now other than it i'm going to install matplotlib jupyter as well let me show you the current status of our virtual environment just type this command again pip space freeze now you can see that there's numpy is there panda is there python data utils and pytz is used for data and conversions and the sixth module in the python is used to make the python 2 and the python version 3 compatible to each other okay now i'm going to install the jupyter notebook where we're going to write down all the codes and see the impact and matplotlib to plot the graphs and charts okay so this is also installed and let me show you again the pip freeze this is a bunch of packages and libraries as install okay just because of using jupyter command because it requires a uh, lots of dependencies and libraries okay now we have the jupyter now i'm going to open the jupyter notebook using this jupyter space notebook command if we're going to create the jupyter notebook and here you can see that there is only vnv is there it's our current working directory now from here you can either create the notebook or you can even create the text file folder and you can even initialize the timer from there okay so this is the notebook which i'm going to use here now let me show you that 
pandas is installed or not just going to import this pandas and just write down print and to check the version of pandas which simply means that the pandas libraries is installed successfully in our local system okay okay speedy will be there at the at the very beginning okay so just write down pd dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore so it, it will going to print the version of the pandas which is 1.03.03 so now i'm going to check the version of numpy as well just write down np here which is 1.21.2 okay and uh, one more thing which is matplotlib just import matplotlib as mp and instead of pd just replace it with mp if we're going to show the version of the matplotlib okay i'm not going to show each and a version of each and every libraries which are installed in our virtual environment the these are the libraries which i'm going to use okay that's why i showed you so this is how you can set up your virtual environment what's up guys welcome back in this lesson i'm going to show you that how you can import the different types of files into your pandas data frame okay in my previous lesson i've shown you that how you can set up the virtual environment and install the libraries and packages okay so first of all here i'm going to import the panda library just like before i did it and here i'm going to read the csv file okay so to read the csv file you need to use this read underscore csv function so this is the csv file which i'm going to read and convert it into our pandas data frame okay so let me copy the name of this file and put it here and yeah this is how it is simple to read the csv file and convert it into the pandas data frame okay now i'm going to put the same thing but um for this time i'm going to do it for the excel file okay let me make a header here okay reading a csv file okay now i'm going to do the same thing here for excel file as well let me create the another heading cell okay and here just write down excel file all these of files i'm going to share with you okay just going to copy again and instead of using read csv you need to use read excel here okay and the name of the file of course i'm not going to use the csv here you need to use this uh, new xls file here okay which is ownership dot xlxx okay so when i run this cell it prompt that you need to install this open pxyl open pyxl okay so for it i'm going to open my command prompt we'll go inside our virtual environment and then we're going to install that particular library and then check it out that it's working fine or not okay we are inside our virtual environment and here i'm going to use this pip install again and that required library so i have downloaded and installed as well as in my virtual environment let me run this cell again and you can see that now that error is not there okay now this is how you can simply read the excel file so this is how you can read the csv excel file and many other kind of files you can read just you need to use read at the first and that particular kind of file will be there after underscore now here i'm going to create a data frame with the help of dictionary okay you know that dictionary is a data type in the python where there is two things there one is key and one is value okay so first of all i'm going to create a key which will be our column for our data frame just write down a and then one comma two comma three this is a kind of of list is here okay and then i'm going to put the another key and another set of values in the form of the list okay four comma five comma six okay this is how you can easily create a simple dictionary let me show you how it looked like a then one two three then b then four five six okay now i'm going to convert this dictionary into the data frame 
to do so you need to use the pd dot data frame command okay and put the dictionary inside the braces just write dict and run the select again okay yeah the f will be in the uppercase okay so this is how you can create a data frame using dictionary and the list as well okay let me add another cell and create a list of some set of numbers there like 7 comma 8 comma 9 and replace it with this okay so this is how you you have created a data frame this is a dictionary and inside the dictionary there is a list and which is transformed into the pandas data frame so till now i've shown you that how you can read the csv file excel file and even to create the data frame using dictionary and the list and in my next lesson i'm going to show you that how you can create the data frame reading the urls and the sql okay so for now keep learning and keep exploring hey there welcome back here in this lesson, I'm going to show you that how you can create the pandas data frame using URL. URL, I can say uh, HTML file, okay, from a website. Now, first of all, I'm going to create a header cell reading the URL. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to copy this. I'm too lazy to even the right whole command here. Okay, now I'm going to replace this Excel with HTML and put the HTML page inside the bracket. So this is a simple HTML file which I have created uh, the index.html and it is kept in the same working directory. Okay, you don't need to put the whole location for your HTML file. Okay, once you will going to run this cell, it will going to ask for this particular library which is LXML. And here I'm going to again open my virtual environment and install that particular library okay just write down pip install lxml okay and even if you're not sure that it will going to work fine or not you can use this pip3 as well for version 3 for your python so we have the lxml installed but still whenever we are trying to run this cell that error is not removing so for it, the best thing is, which we opt to do whenever we stuck in some kind of problem, which is to restart. And if you're going to restart your Jupyter notebook and see the magic, it's now perfectly running. Okay. We don't have any kind of errors there. Okay. So this is how you can read the HTML file and to create the data frame. But you can see here. The data frame which I have read from HTML is not in the form of data frame. It is actually the, the list. Now I'm going to check the length of that particular list, which is one. Okay. Now this is a list for data frames. If that particular website contains three tables, then there will be the length of list will be three because it is the list of data frames. As you can see, I'll just use that index. In the bracket I've used a zero and it reflects the data frame and even the columns are stocks and are size there okay so this is how you can read the HTML file you will get the list of data frame then you need to use the index command to have to have a look for that particular data frame okay so this is the Wikipedia page and here I'm going to open random URL and uh, this is the URL and there are I think two tables are there in this particular page or three is there let me confirm first of all I'm going to copy the URL of this particular Wikipedia page and put inside it okay let's remove this index.html and paste this wikipedia one okay we have the url of our web page and now run this cell and let me check it out the length of that particular list 
I think there will be three or two tables are there. Just write down len, which is to check the length of your list, and it is two. Okay, so there are two tables in that particular web page. Now for index one, which is which will be zero here, that's the the table which we required here. Okay, so this is how you can simply read any web page and that contains table and then you can convert into the data frame and then start your process now we need to do some kind of data cleaning here which is not the matter of concern here we're going to discuss later on for now keep learning and keep exploring hey there welcome back in this lesson i'm going to show you that how you can read the sql query and then convert that kind of rows into the data frame so first of all we need to have some database some tables and some values into the table i have already created the database as well as created the tables and also added the values into it with the help of insert command into it as you can see on the screen uh, the table name is company and it contains five rows now i'm going to create the data frame which will going to read that thing okay so first of all we need to import the pandas library import pandas as pd then i'm going to import the sqlite 3 module as sql this sql module provides a straightforward interface to interact with sqlite database okay now we need to create the connection object okay this connection object which I'm going to create using this sql3.connect and through which we can easily interact with the SQL database. And if you want to see the columns, see the rows of the table, you can also use the cursor. But let me show you before creating the data frame, let me show you that how you can read the rows of the table with the help of cursor okay so just write here cursor equal to connection dot cursor okay through cursor you can perform all kind of operations okay so i have connected this cursor with the connection now just write down this for loop for row in cursor dot execute execute for executing all kind of sql queries okay and the here i'm going to put the sql query is select asterisk from company the table name is company okay let me show you how it will going to work now once you have the query i'm now going to print the rows okay just write down print and the bracket row so it will going to read all the rows of that table okay either you can extract the table content using cursor or it simply you can use the panda library and it contains a module name pd dot read sql query just like read csv read excel read html we have another module which is read sql query and inside it you need to put that query select asterisk from company and one more thing you need to pass which is the connection okay just put comma and then just write down connection that's how you can simply create the data frame let me show you the content of this data frame and it works fine so this is how you can easily extract the table content and transform into the data frame okay so for now keep learning keep learning and keep exploring hey there welcome back in this lesson i'm going to show you that how you can read the xml and json file so first of all we need to import the pandas library let me show you that how our json file will look like this is a json file which contains the objects and the string in the json format json simply means javascript object notation which is primarily used in transmitting the data between your web application to the server okay so each 
thing inside uh, curly braces represents a row okay now first of all i'm going to read the json file to read that you need to use this pd.readjson and you need to pass the name of your json file test.json which is the name of our file and this is how you can easily read and convert it into the data frame now let me show you that how you can read the xml file as well earlier i've shown you reading the csv file then excel files then reading from html then the sql queries now we have shown you that how you can read the json file so to read the xml file you need to use pd.read then xml instead of json okay and uh, let me add heading here also json file down and run this cell again xml file basically is a file that contains tags just like the html it is a extendable markup language which is used to structure the data for the storage or transport okay it contains same thing just like html have the text and the text okay so we widely use this xml format when we do some transportations where we're doing some handle structures and so on things so we generally use the xml rather than using any other format so this is how you can easily the json as well as the xml file so, so till now i have shown you how you can import the data from different kind of sources this is i have taught you, you in the first lesson where i have read the csv file excel file then html then this is a, a sql query and now we have just read the json as well as xml file in the next lesson we're going to dive deeper into the pandas so for now keep learning keep exploring see you in the next class hey guys welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to show you some of the basic operations and also tell some of the basic functions of the pandas which you must know okay so let's do it so the very first thing which you need to do is to import the panda library and you need to create the data frame this is our input file which i'm going to create the data from it okay so now we have our data frame let me show you how it look like just put df and this is our data frame which contains 262 rows and the seven columns now i'm going to run the very first function which is df.shape which displays the total rows and the columns the first value represents the total rows and the second value represents the total columns now as you can see few of them are visible on my screen some of them are top rows and some of them are the bottom rows of our data frame now in order to view whole data frame you need to configure some of the changes like you need to change the value of max row and the max column size okay so as we are aware of the size of our data frame so i just put the random number you can put any of the number okay so this is how you can sh show the complete data frame just changing the size of max rows and the max columns under the pandas option the other function which you must know is head and tail by the name you can understand that head will going to display the top rows and that tail will going to display the bottom rows of the data frame by default this the size is 5 you can also utter the number like i'm going to put the 10 number here so it will going to display the top 10 rows and the top bottom rows of our data frame okay now other function of the pandas is df.columns and it will going to display the columns of our data frame okay as well as the data type which is object here now using this len which means length we're going to give the total number of columns which is seven in number as you can see 
while running that df dot shape we also get the same number and then this df dot info is very very important panda functions which is generally used by everyone to get the overview of the data sets okay like how many columns are there the non null values the data types of each and columns the memory uses and etc etc 362 in 262 entries you will get the concise picture the concise summary of the data frame and other function which is very important which is df dot describe we're going to give some basic statistical values like the mean value the standard deviation value the different percentile value the mean and max value and the count as well which is 262 so this both function this df.info and df.describe are very very important panda function now the other function which you, which you must know is df.count is just the same thing which will going to display 262 rows are there as you can see for each and columns another very very important operation which you must know to find out the missing values from the data frame of course we don't have any missing value here as when we ran that df.info function we got nothing okay no null values were present so what i'm going to do here is to put the null value into our data frame and see that on which column that null value is there okay so i'm going to change the first value of the open column which is i'm going to put into none value now i'm going to run this df and you can see that none value is there now i'm going to run this df.info command again and you will see it will going to give the thing like you can see here 261 non null values are there and one is null values there later on series we're going to focus that how you can remove those none values the missing values because having missing values into the your data frame into your data set will going to mislead us a problem for creating the machine learning models or for any other task so it's very very important to remove the missing things from our data frame i'm going to discuss all of those things later on in this series and for now keep learning and keep exploring hey friend welcome back in this lesson i'm going to show you that how you can perform the indexing and the selecting the data so first of all we need to import our panda libraries and then create our data frame so this is our data frame so let's start the column character which i'm going to use it has actually three arguments the first argument is the start argument then second argument is the stop argument and the last one is the step argument okay so here just i put down that simple column which means that it will going to start from the very beginning and till the last row of the column as in my previous lesson i've already shown you that how you can view your old data frame just using that pd option display max column and row method okay so here you can see when i just put down this df and then there is one column and the five is there which means that it will going to start from the very beginning and it will going to stop till five okay and it is a zero based indexing model just like a numpy and a python slicing feature so here you can see that now it will going to start from the fifth fifth row and till the last row okay till now i have just put down only two arguments okay in order to put the third argument i'm going to show you later on this is how you can view the data between the fifth row to the tenth row of the data frame okay now if you're going to give the negative number which means negative is the bottom of the data frame okay just like i'm written down minus five which means it will going to show the five bottom rows of our data frame and here if i'm going to put like minus 10 it will be not going to be happen because 
we are going to start with the minus 5 so it's better to give this minus 2 okay so it will going to give the last three rows of the data frame minus 10 and then minus 1 okay till now by default the third argument is set to 1 like the step will be count as a 1 so you can see here 252 plus 1 253 plus 1 254 now let me show you something this is the third argument which I'm using right now this this is a special case in the slicing where you can reverse the order of the columns of the, actually not columns reverse the order of the rows in the data frame and if you're going to put the one you can see that the it will going to appear the same thing okay now I'm going to put the two here you can see here now the left side in the very left side you can see that zero two four six eight the steps is changed into the two okay so whenever it will going to travel it will going to just increase the two value now similar for the three as well now here I'm going to change the value for this reverse order as well you can see so this is how you can perform the colon base indexing and slicing okay now I'm going to show you something else like suppose you want to view only two columns of your data frame like one will be the date okay and the next column will be like close okay so if you want to show only two particular columns from the data frame even you can create a new data frame okay let me show you how it will it will going to work okay you need to put this thing inside another square braces okay keep this in mind so now let me run this you can see here it's just showing the only two column details okay now from here I'm going to create another data frame df1 now this is a data frame with just only two columns which I have extracted from the data frame df okay so this is the another thing which you must know that how you can view only two columns from any existing data frame and then convert into a new data frame the another thing which is very important which I'm going to tell here in this lesson is df dot loc and df dot iloc okay let me create another data frame so that the size the number of rows will be limited to the five okay because by default the number is five while using this head method head method is simply to show the top five rows okay so now i'm going to show you like i'm going to use this loc method which is a label based indexing method and here as the row based indexing is not defined is not declared so that's why i'm just going to put the zero there and the column through which i want to extract the data so at the position of zero and the label of a column label with date the value is 22nd september 2020 similar with i'm going to perform the same thing with iloc which is a integer positional indexing method where you need to provide the each and everything like the positions of the column indexing as well as row indexing now here i'm going to give the name to our row indexing okay to give the name of your, the row indexing you need to use this df2.index and then you need to i'm just going to create a simple list from a to e okay there are five columns five rows are there so i'm going to create the index till e okay a to e now let me show you that how it will look like here you can see on the very left side the row index is a b c d e okay now i'm going to use that loc method again and this time we have the row label now instead of using that integer value you can just simply put the a here okay so this is how you can easily use LOC and IL LOC method 
to do indexing okay till now i have explained you that how you can perform the colon based indexing and the slicing as well as i've also shown you the difference between loc and ilc and how they work okay in the next lesson we'll go to deep dive into the world of pandas so for now keep learning keep exploring also guys welcome back in this lesson i'm going to talk all about the statistics information which you are going to have using the describe method in one of my lesson i've already shown you that how this method work and through this method you're going to get some of the precisely information like count mean standard deviation the minimum and the maximum values and the different percentile values okay now here there's one of the column which is volume here that doesn't have any role here so i'm going to drop this column okay and meanwhile i'm going to explain some of the things like what is mean mean is like the average value the of all data sets then we have the standard deviation that the how many the difference between the values in the data set with the mean value which will you can get in the standard deviation and the standard deviation is like it if the standard deviation value is too much high which means that they are not correlated to each other if the standard deviation value is, is low it simply means they are correlated to each other the values are somehow nearby to each other now in case you are filling up the missing values you need to see the standard deviation values there okay so if the value is too much high so so just simply remove that particular row and the column okay then we have the different percentiles value which simply means like you need to arrange all of the data sets in the ascending or descending order then you need to pick the mid value which is the 50 percent percentile or you can even say it as the median value now here you can use this mean method the standard deviation method then minimum method the maximum method to get that particular thing and just describe is just used to give the concise information of these values but in order if you want to to have some median value the mean value the min and the max value you just simply use this methods which we're going to give that particular thing okay so you need to learn about all of the, this statistics methods okay now we have the mean the minimum value the maximum values let me show you the another method which you must know like the position where they are going to reside in the data set like for the minimum value we have in the close section like 0 0.8103 okay and the for maximum value it is 0.85945 now in order to take out the position you need to use this id x max okay through which you're going to get the position where the minimum value is located in the data sets okay you need to put the x here in the between idx max okay so it says like if you want in order to get the maximum values its position is in the fourth position in the data set now i'm going to do the same thing with the men for taking out the minimum value position which is at the 77th location now let me show you that i'm right or not so you need to use this ILOC method which i have already shown you that how it works okay because we are getting the the outputs in the numeric format so i'm using this ILOC because it will going to accept only numeric values and for labels indexing level you need to use just LOC okay so this is how you can see the maximum value which we got which is 0.85945 and and for the same thing this 0.8103 for the minimum values okay so this is how you can simply take out the mean the minimum and the maximum values position now the next function which you must know will be the median values okay so in order to take out the median value the 50 percent percentile you need to use the median method okay let me put the df dot median and the method and the 
put that open and close braces okay now this is how you will going to get the median values as well and if you want to take out the particular column value only you need to just put the square braces and add the column name there another thing which is very important which is correlation you know you can see very clearly like in the diagonals you will getting the one 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 what it means simply means that if you're going to compare the column open with itself okay so it will look like similar that's why it's going to give the one value for it and if you're going to compare that open value column with the another columns like for comparing the high you will going to get 0 0.990281 this is very very close to one which simply means they are highly correlated to each other okay and here you will get the thing like standard deviation will be very very low okay because if the correlation is high which simply means the standard deviation value is too low okay so this is how this different kinds of methods of statistics will going to be helpful while understanding all about the data sets in my next lesson we're going to learn more about pandas so for now keep learning and keep exploring hey friend welcome back here in this lesson we're going to talk all about the shorting shorting is kind of process where we're going to order our data set either in increasing order or either in decreasing order so here let me create the simple data frame where there will be two columns with there one column will going to contain all the alphabetical things and the another column will going to keep the numerical values as well so here we're going to perform the ascending the descending things in both of the things in numeric value as well as the string values okay so first of all I'm going to do a sharding uh, in the column a okay just you need to use df dot short underscore values and put the whatever columns you want to short by default it is in the ascending order as you can see a b c d e f g h now i'm going to show you for the another column as well for column b now here you can see 0 1 2 3 4 till 9 so here you can see that how you can simply short your data with the help of just using the simple method short values method by default it is in ascending order as you can see it now you need to put the ascending equal to false now you can see j i h then g f e it is very difficult to say in the reverse order isn't it and similarly i'm going to do for the column b as well 9876543210 it's like countdown is there okay so here you can easily short your values accordingly so these are some of the simple scenarios which i have put in now i'm going to do some complex thing here we're going to create the complex scenarios here firstly we did the shorting with the help of only single column now instead of using the single column we are going to use the shorting with the help of the multiple columns okay that's why i've added the similar values c in the column a and the value one in the column b okay similar values because they are already there in my data sets so what will going to happen that it will going to short the first column and then the second column here you can see the i have just put that a column first and the p column after it so what going to happen it will going to short the values for column a now suppose if now it has the repetitive values okay for a column it will having the cc values there so it will going to be like a b c c then d e f g okay now in the same once it short the values for the column a it will going to short for the value column b as well now they have the c for two values okay the values is coincidentally the same the one is there let me change the value instead of adding the one i'm going to add another value here two will be okay isn't it because that will be not a bad coincidence will be there okay all right so we have added the and updated the values of our data frame now you can see here like cc is there and then beside there one and two is there so it short the value for c on the on the basis of the column a okay so one and the two it is in the ascending order you can see it very well 
now if i'm going to put the b first and the a first you will going to get that 2 2 okay and c comes first then okay b comes first then c that's why b is there upward and then c is there okay now i'm going to change this ascending to the false now it will be there in the descending order now you can see here 2 is there then 1 is there because it is in a descending order so these are different complex scenarios which i put in in order to do data shorting hope you have understand and if you have any kind of doubt you can ask me in the q a section for now keep learning and keep exploring Hey friend, welcome back. Here in this lesson, I'm going to cover various methods to filter the pandas data frames. Okay, we all know that data filtering is one of the most frequent data manipulation operation, which is just like the where class in the SQL, or you maybe use the filters in the MS Excel for selecting the specific rows for based on the your required conditions. Okay, so here I'm going to use the filters to do sub settings of the data okay we are going to subset for our data frame now here i created a simple filter to have the values greater than the five in the b column we got that things okay now you can also add some logical operators like and and r this pipe is used for the r operation either this or either that but it will going to satisfy one of the conditions and the data will be accordingly okay let me show you so here the first column which we have h3 which is not greater than 5 but it is greater than the e that's why it is here so this this is the how this r operator work the logical operator now in order to put the and logical operator which i'm going to put using the amp percent here instead of using the pipe operator just replace this value this operator with this symbol so here you will get the both here it will going to satisfy both of the conditions the the result which we got it the value is greater than 5 and the values of greater than e we got them so this is how this logical operators you can put it here same way you can do it in sql as well in the ms excel as well now i'm going to create the list abc and now just like we right now like where a where occupation in like doctor engineer then it will going to show all that kind of results do you remember so here i'm create a simple x list and check it out that either this data frame contains this kind of data or not so here we got that things like a b and there's two results for the c as well now if i'm going to put this tiled operator it will going to perform the reverse thing the opposite thing okay the not operator okay so here it will going to get all of the things which are not going to satisfy the condition so this is how you can create the simple filters now another thing which you must know in the pandas world like pf dot query it's simply going to work like the sql query here you, you just need to put the same thing actually it will going to perform the same thing which we did it it will work like the one of the filters which i have created earlier let me show you how it would work okay there are different ways you can perform the same things okay so don't be confused so just write df.query and whatever things you want make sure you need to put all of the things under this single column okay okay we got some error here and what the error is in okay okay that's fine so this is how you can use the df.query to filter the data from the data set now i'm going to do the same thing again i'm going to put the logical operators then i'm going to put some of two conditions the multiple conditions there okay so this is how you can do the filtering in your data frame the pandas data frame so there are multi multiple ways you can do okay now other than this i don't think so that 
I have to do any other things as well. I've already shown you the different criteria, different scenarios which you can put it here. Okay. So you can create as much as filters as you want to uh, according to your requirement. Okay. So this is how you can filter the rows in the pandas. Hope you learn how to filter it. So for now, keep learning and keep exploring.